Hello everyone, I'm recording this on Monday, uh, June 6th, and uh, this is a test of Ultima 4. Actually, hold on, I'm going to turn down the volume a bit, because that is loud. Anyways, I've never played an Ultima game before in my life, so this will be blind, well mostly blind. I mean, I kind of half paid attention to a review spoon did a while ago. I don't remember much of it. Anyways, um, Ultima is one of the oldest computer role-playing games as far as I know. Uh, researching the series, of course. Uh, I've installed... I mean... Yeah, sorry. Now, you might be wondering why I'm playing this game, and that's because uh, there's this new site out called UltimaForever.com get this game for free. Uh, I've installed a graphics update and I've installed something called XU4, which allows it to run on a modern computer really easily. Uh, once again, I've never played an Ultimate game. I didn't bother reading the manual because, you know, who reads manuals? And, yeah, so let's get started. Ultima 4, Quest of the Avatar. Pretty much what I think we're going to do in this game is become Jesus. Or, a new Jesus. Let's see. Configure. Game enhancement on. Ah, uh, alright. Uh huh. Alright, we're gonna start initiated journey. By what name shalt thou be known in this world of time? Oh, joy, I, 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 I gotta choose something. Um. I have to have Sir in my name. Let's see. Sir Flail. Oh, how's it that people spell it these days? Whatever. Oh. Uh, I think that's how I spell it. Marthal. Male or female? Male. Alright, I'm not sure if I'm going to try and read this because I need to get Oscar. This is made by Lord British and he's pretty British. I'll ask him about it later. Anyways, today is war. If there's a cooling breeze, the latest in a series of personal crises seems insurmountable. You are being pulled apart in all directions. This afternoon, walk in the countryside slowly brings relaxation to your war mind. The soil and strain of modern high-tech living begins to wash off in layers. That willow tree um, near the stream looks comfortable and inviting. Close of the dragonflies and the whisper of the willow's swaying branches bring a deep peace, searching inward for tranquility and happiness. You close your eyes. High fetch cascading sound like crystal wind chimes. It hinges on your floating awareness. As you open your eyes, you see a shimmering blueness rise from the ground. The sound seems to be emanating from this glowing portal. It's difficult to look at the blueness. Light seems to bend and distort around it, while the sound waves become so intense they appear to become visible. The portal hangs there for a moment, then, with the rush of it floating back, Ouch. It sinks into the ground. Something remains suspended in air for a moment before falling to the earth with a heavy thud. Somewhat shaken by this vision, you rise to your feet and enter to investigate. A crude circle of stones surround the spot where the portal appeared. There is something glinting in the glass. Pick up the animal shaped like a cross with a look at the top. It is an egg. I know. The sacred symbol of life and rebirth. But this could not have made the thought. So you look again and you find a large book wrapped around the thick cloth. With trembling hands you unwrap the book. Behold, the cloth is a map. And within lies not one book, but two. This map is of a land strange to you, and the style speaks of ancient cartography. The script on the cover of the first book is arcane but readable. The title is The History of Britannia. 
as told by Kyle the Younger. The other book is just a reading to look at. It's small covers appear to be fashioned by some sort of leathery hide. The fluent creature is in The reddish black skin radiates an intense order, suggesting an ancient power. The time of the title is beyond your ten. You dare not open the book and disturb whatever sleeps within. You decide to pursue the mystery. Settling back under the little tree, you open the book. You read the book of history. Um, do I want to read it? I might make a little side note. I don't know how many of you have ever played Ultima, but I've never. Um, once again, if you guys want to follow along with this LP, like what History of Britannia is, if you don't, if you once again go to UltimaForever.com, you can download this game. And in the zip file, there is a um, thing. There's some PDF files for the old manuals, the cloth map, because. I'm going to be using a laptop for most of this. Actually, hold on, guys, we'll get some laptop. You're going to hear a loud thud here. Alright, we're going to Anyways, so yeah, in, in, I guess in the, uh, whenever this came out, I think the 19th. 80s, you would actually have a cloth map in a book that you would read at this point, I would think. But since I am a little, um, modern, I'm going to use the wonders of my laptop here, and I'm going to read this on my own time. I mean, if you want to look, if you want to hear me read it, because I'm a you just saw how bad I am at reading crap, um, you can do it another time. But, yeah. Anyways, so, let's just say I read. No, really. Oh, you. You. What? Clever move. Well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stop this part. Uh, no. I'll. Actually, make the second part. I'll make a part zero. Alright, all right. happy, happy, happy game from the 1980s. Who read my mind? And I'm now freaked out about. Anyways, closing the book, you again pick up the ink. As you hold it, you begin to hear a hauntingly familiar lute-like sound wafting over the nearby hill. Still clutching the strange artifacts, you rise unbidden and climb the slope. In the village below, you see what appears to be a fair. It seems strange that you came that way earlier and not noticed something. As you mull this over, your feet carry you down towards the site. It is no ordinary traveling carnival, but a renaissance fair. The pennants and the tent tops blow briskly in the late afternoon breeze. The ticket taker at the rent fair's gate starts to ask for you for money, but upon spotting your aim, he says, Welcome, friend. Enter in peace and find your path. The music continues to pull you forward amongst the merchants and vendors. Glimpses of fabulous treasures can be seen in some of the shadowy roofs. These people are very happy. They seem to glow with an inner light. Some look up as you pass and smile, but you cannot stop. The music compels you to move onward through the crowd. Through the gathering dust, you see a secluded gypsy wagon sitting off the road. The music seems to emanate from the wagon. As you draw near, a woman's voice weaves into the music, saying, You may approach, O Sika. Oh, jeez. I'm not gonna get the uh, My sprite's bad. Anyways, you enter to find an old gypsy sitting in a small curtain room, where she wears an ink around her neck. In front of her is a round table covered in deep green velvet. The room smells so heavily of incense that you feel dizzy. See the ink, the ancient gypsy smiles and warns you, Never depart with it. We have been waiting such a long time, but at last you have come. Sit here and I shall read the path of your future. Upon the table she places a curious wooden object like an abacus but without beads. In her hand she holds eight unusual cards. Let us begin the casting. The gypsy places the first two cards upon the table. They are the cards of honesty and valor, she says. Consider this. Thou hast been prohibited by thy absent lord from joining thy friends in a close-pitched battle. Dost thou, A, refrain, thou may honesty claim obedience, or B, show valor, and aid thy comrades, knowing 
Thou may deny it later. Alright. I'm gonna have to go with honesty here. The duty places two more of the cards upon the table. They are the cards of justice and really says, Consider this. On witness, thou hast slain a great dragon in self-defense. A poor warrior claims the offer of a woman. Dost thou A. Justly step forward to claim thy reward, or B. Humbly go about life, secure in thy self-esteem. I'm pretty good at my self-esteem. I just killed a motherfucking dragon. Gypsy places two more of the cards upon my table. They are the cards of compassion and honor. He says, consider this. Thou art sworn to uphold a lord who participates in the forbidden torture of prisoners. Each night their cries of pain reach thee. Dost thou, A, show compassion by reporting thy deeds, or B, the thought honor thy oath and ignore the deeds? Torture, eh? Eh, I'm gonna choose honor here, because, you know, this is medieval times, and forbidden torture's kinda all over the place. The gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. They are the cards of sacrifice and spirituality. She says, consider this. Thou hast spent thy life in charitable and righteous work. Thine uncle, the innkeeper, lies ill and asks you to take over his tavern. Dost thou A. Sacrifice thy life for purity to aid thy king, or B. Decline and follow thy spirit's call. Rose before. G. No. Yeah, whatever, I chose the yellow. I didn't choose spirituality. The gypsy places two more, and so she says, Consider this. Thy lord mistakenly believes he slew a dragon. Thou hast proof that thy lance fell to thee. When asked, dost thou honestly claim the kill and prize, or be humbly permit the lord his belief? You know, before I kill a dragon, I'll let a poor fighter do it, because he needs to work. But you're a motherfucking lord. So, I'm taking that. The gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. They are the cards of sacrifice and honor. She says, consider this. Thou art a bounty hunter, sworn to return an alleged murderer. After his capture, thou believest him to be innocent. Is thou A, sacrifice thy sizable bounty for the belief, or B, honor thy oath to return him as thou promised? Well, just because I believe he's innocent doesn't mean he's innocent, so I'm gonna honor my oath. Uh, more consider this. Thou art sworn to protect thy lord at any cost, yet thou, yet thou know he hath committed a crime. Authorities ask thee of the affair. Dost thou A, break thine oath by honestly speaking, or B, uphold honor by silently keeping thine oath? Well, if he committed a crime, if he's been torturing people, committing a crime, I'm gonna go with honesty here, that lord's a jerk. Okay, with the final choice, the incense swirls, swells up around you. The gypsy speaks as if a great distance, her voice growing fainter with each words. So be it, thy path is chosen. There's a moment of intense, wrenching vertigo. As you open your eyes, a, a voice whispers within your mind, Seek the counsel of thy sovereign. After a moment, the spinning says dies, and you open your eyes to... Stuff. Press Alt-H for a moment. Alright, 
That's good. I'll see you guys next time.